Life is fragile. It's a fact we're learning in real time, every day. What we once called normal has seemingly disappeared. There's uncertainty in the air, restlessness in our hearts. Things we once took for granted are becoming difficult to find. Our usual day-to-day -day has evolved into this odd chaos. Peace is becoming obsolete. Many have lost jobs, security, and those they love. The pain is undeniable. But what if our fragility caused us to lean harder into God? What if, in our weakness, we chose to rely more on His strength? Would our outlook change? Would the peace that passes understanding begin to drown out the noise of this moment? Would we walk in a quiet confidence, knowing our God is mighty to save? We're not promised tomorrow, but we are given a simple truth to stand on. Our God goes before us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Yes, life is fragile. But in our weakness, He is strong. Praise the Lord. Welcome to another installation of our uh, video presentation. And we especially welcome all of our Facebook and YouTube uh, friends and, and subscribers. We're asking that you do subscribe uh, after you hear this broadcast, after you hear this, this, this video presentation. 
uh, just go on and, and tap the button and, 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 and save us uh, and, and spread the word that we are on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, we are glad for your presence here with us today, and especially to my Dove Church family. We miss everybody, uh, but we'll be together soon, and we thank God for that. And uh, we are especially grateful for how good he is to us and that he is a keeper. And uh, right now we're going to say what we normally say is our, our confession. If you will get your Bibles in your hand and, and wherever your phone is, it, where your Bible is, uh, uh, and repeat this confession after me. Now some of you have ever requested that I go slower while I'm saying it, so to give you a chance to repeat it. So here goes. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer, and that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging Word of God. So my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, as I gladly receive the Word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for bread. We thank you for what you're going to supply to us today. And we ask you that you would just minister through us to the needs of the people. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, we want to talk about healing through worship. Healing through worship. And I want to say we have been given a pathway to healing, and it's called worship. First of all, we are instruments of worship, and our worship has a focus. That focus is God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 1 John 5 and 7 says this, For there are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. All three deserve and must receive our worship again as they are one. Well, let's go back into the Old Testament because there is, is, is a, a, a great story in there that talks about healing as it relates to worship. And and in 1 Samuel chapter 16, we find the first king of Israel, Saul, in trouble with the Lord through constant disobedience and self-will. He was the king that the people chose. God anointed Saul king based on the request of the children of Israel. He'll give you what you ask for, but then there are some things that come after you get your request. 1 Samuel 16, 14 through 16 shares this. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servant said to him, Surely a distressing spirit from God is troubling you. In other words, the Holy Spirit, which was an upon, not indwelling experience, and the anointing had lifted off of Saul. Because of his relationship, because of some of the choices he was making, and, and not acknowledging God and making sacrifice, so on and so forth. But as a point of clarity, we need to point out a crucial fact. Verse 14 says, a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. A distressing spirit from the Lord, from the Lord, troubled him. Now, let me say this this way. This statement is truly stated, but it is not a statement of truth. Our reason for this statement is this proof text. James 1, 13 through 14, New King James says this. Let no one say when he is tempted... I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. Verse 
but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. The truth is that Saul himself left the door open for the oppressive spirit to come into his life. Whenever the relationship between you and God gets strained, the question to be asked is, who moved? In 1 Samuel 16 and 15, Saul's servants saw there was a problem with him and knew the problem was an evil spirit. Saul did not see that he had a problem. And sometimes we don't see that we have a problem, but others around us see that we have a problem. We have been involved in it so long till we don't see it as a problem. But others around us know that something is not where it needs to be. And this servant saw that Saul was having a problem. And he called it out rightly. So there was an element of discernment there. He said, an evil spirit from the Lord is, is on you. The servant was not only a perceptive, but he was prepared to help by offering a remedy. 1 Samuel 16 and 16 from the NASB says this, Let our Lord now command your servants who are before you, let them seek a man who is skillful, a skillful player on the harp. And it shall come about when the evil spirit from God is on you, that he shall play the harp with his hand, and you will be well. A skillful player. Somebody that knows how to get into the presence. Somebody that knows how to operate with their instrument. A skillful player. At this time, a divine intersection was about to happen. Earlier in this this 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, David had already been anointed by Samuel. And the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord came upon David. It had left Saul, but came on David. And so, at the right time, David was called up to utilize not only his gift that he learned from being a shepherd in the sheepfold, playing to just sheep. That was his great audience, sheep. And he learned how to sing songs to the Lord playing on his harp. And so, so as he, he knew how to play, when, when he was anointed, uh, uh, somebody said, uh, find somebody that's skillful. And in 1 Samuel 16, 17, and 18, Saul said to his servant, provide for me now a man who can play well, play well, and bring him to me. Then one of the young men said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who is a skillful musician, a mighty man of valor, a warrior, one prudent in speech, and a handsome man, and the Lord is with him. That's key. The Lord is with him. And then we go on to our first principle. If you are in a weakened state, it is imperative that you be led into worship by a worshiper. In our house, Dove Church, my wife, uh, Pastor Marcella, is the worshiper. And, and she has one creed. She said, I'm going in even if you don't follow me in. And many Sundays she goes on in. And, 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 and we've got good sense, so we follow her on in because she's a worshiper. And worshipers really know how to get into the presence of the Lord. They're relentless in that pursuit. So you need, when you get into trouble, you need somebody that, that if you are in a weakened state, if you are you know, sideways, if you're not exactly where you need to be, connect to a worshiper, somebody that can help you and move you into the presence of the Lord because that's where you will get help that you need. It worked for Saul and it will work for you. You always need to align yourself with a worshiper. You might say, this is Old Testament. And, and as I mentioned about we worship Jesus earlier, Jesus is not here, but he is. Let's look at what David's father did 
to make sure Jesus would be honored in worship. Back in the Old Testament, 1 Samuel 16, 19 through 20 says this. Therefore Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me your son David who is with the sheep. And Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread, a skin of wine, and a young goat, and sent them by his son David to Saul. Jesse could have sent anything, fine olive oil, choice wheat, precious stones. Instead, he sent bread, wine, and a young goat, all symbolic of Jesus. All would foreshadow the future. Bread and wine were there at the Lord's Supper. His body and his blood. A young coat was used at Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem on the day we know as Palm Sunday. The same bread and the same wine is being presented on our behalf daily. As Jesus sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And as he sits there, he is covering both our sin and, and reminding God of the payment, his blood that was made for our redemption that covered us. 1 Samuel 16, 23 tells us, as we move deeper into this story, Whenever the distressing spirit came upon Saul, David would play and the distressing spirit would leave him and he would be refreshed. It is important to mention a few things. Music in itself is neither good nor bad. Music can be used for great good or for great evil because it is such a powerful tool of communication to our inner being. It is in the hands and the spirit of the individual who is using the music. Satan was the minister of music of heaven. And when he got full of himself and thought he could be exalted above God, he was cast out of heaven. And so since then, he has perverted music. But in the kingdom of God, as we sing out to God, we are, we are taking back the music and using it for its rightful uh, focus, and that's on God. Saul needed to be led into worship. So it was important to seek out a man to do the job. Principle number two, worship creates a controlled environment. It is undefiled and pure. In this environment, anything can happen. It is in this environment that anything that is not of God has to flee. Evil cannot dwell there. It is the place of fullness. It is a God space. If you want to drive out evil, if you want the fullness, if you want to drive out depression, if you want to release yourself into joy and freedom, if you want to get stable, if you want to be healed, if you want to be delivered, move into God's space through worship. Principle number three, worship creates a habitation. Worship creates a habitation, an abode, a place where someone can dwell. A habitation is a dwelling place. Psalm 22, 22 and 3 from the King James Version says this, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Worship beckons God to join us. It beckons him, come in, be a part. Connect yourself to us. Align yourself with us. Now while we ask him to come, he brings the bigger part with him, his presence. In worship, you invite his space into your place. Paul Wilbur 
the songwriter wrote this song regarding the habitation of God. It's called In Your Presence. And it's one of the songs that we've sung for years, and it came up in my heart along with other songs, but it speaks to healing, worship as healing in this time of, of teaching. In your presence, that's where I am strong. In your presence, O oh Lord my God. In your presence, that's where I belong. Seeking your face, touching your grace. In the cleft of the rock, in your presence, O oh God. The word said that Saul was refreshed. Refreshed, according to the Noah Webster Dictionary, 1826, says this. It means revived, resuscitated, restored, especially after depression. And if you want to get revived, if you want to get resuscitated, if you want life to come back to you, you need to enter into the presence of God, hang out in the habitation with God. In his presence, again, is fullness of joy. And at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. You need to be in a place of fullness. Well, the crux for this lesson was, was a personal family incident that happened. And it touched my life, and so it became clear to me that I needed to speak about worship uh, uh, as, as, as a healer, or healing through worship. Well, my younger brother Harvey contracted COVID-19. He had all the classic symptoms. After learning of Harvey's condition, many people offered various remedies he could use. His condition continued to deteriorate. When I saw him, he was in a weakened state, almost unable to walk. It brought me to tears. Immediately, I urged him to go to the hospital, which admitted him right away. Family members started to move in distress dread, and fear. But we encouraged each other to stay in faith. Fortunately, he, he did not go on a ventilator, but was given oxygen. We were able to talk to him, which is something that does not happen with everybody, because he had his phone with him so he could FaceTime us. And so I kept praying for him and believing for him and asking was he all right and, 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 and touching him in every way I could long distance. And, 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 and something happened. After a while, he was discharged. And as he was discharged, we thought he was at, uh, it, it, was, it was all over, he was at the height, he, had, he was on his way home. And when he got home, we had another conversation about what went on while he was going through the tight places of his illness, while he was in the weakened state. And he shared with me a story. He said, while I didn't go on the ventilator, all I had was oxygen and medication. He said, there was some other stuff going on. He said, I could not rest well because every time I dozed off to go to sleep, I felt, I, I saw myself locked into a black suitcase falling down a stairwell consistently over and over again. So not only was he weakened, not only was he in pain, not only was he, 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 he feeling awful, but he said a, a, a spirit of dread and gloom would come upon him every time he tried to go to sleep, and now he was rest broken. And as he went on, he shared with me that he remembered a story that one of our good friends had told him about playing worship music when you go to bed and when it's time to go to sleep because it gets into your spirit. And so since he had his phone with him, amen, praise God, he, he started playing worship music. 
And as people were trying to call, he had an intuitive nurse that, that, that heard what was going on. And she would hold his call and tell the people that he will call you back later. He's occupied. Because she saw him playing the worship music. Heard him playing it too. And he said, not only could he rest after he played the worship music, he said it was then that he felt himself turn and then a few days later he was discharged. So, Based on his story, I wanted to say that, that I had underestimated uh, uh, the COVID issue. And, 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 and I thought that it was just a physical sickness, but, but it, it moved into a different thing. It moved into the psyche of the person. And so as we listened to story after story from different people, we found out that the mental anguish is almost as bad as the physical anguish. So what John 10 and 10 said, that the thief cometh to steal, kill, and destroy, is accurate and it's right. But I thank God for part B of that phrase, where Jesus said, but I have come that you might have life, and that more abundantly. And I thank you that God, today my brother has life, but he's got it more abundantly. Today, attach yourself to what Jesus has established for you, that being abundant life. Whatever you're going through in this hour, in this time, don't move into dread, don't move into fear, trust God. Worship your way through. Praise your way through. Find it on your phone. Find it any way you can. Play tapes, play it in your car. Play something that's going to encourage you other than the news. Other than the pictures that you see. Other than announcing and to everybody, everybody that dies. Get a better picture of yourself. Get a better picture of what's around you. Because uh, uh, God it has to be exalted. And as you worship him, you create a dwelling place for him. His space invades your place and as he comes in everything else that's not like him has to go in the name of jesus in the name of jesus we have a victory in the name of jesus in the name of jesus satan you got to flee what can ever stand before us when we call on that great name Jesus, 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 Jesus. We have the victory. Remember that I said, you have healing through worship. Blessings to you today. I want to take this time and pray for somebody. Pray for somebody to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're out there and you haven't given him your life, you can repeat these words after me. Father, in Jesus' name, I repent of my sin and I give you my life. I make you my Lord and my Savior. I have a faith confession. I believe that one day you died on the cross and on that third day morning, you were raised from the dead to the glory of God. On that confession, and on that belief, I am saved. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, find a good local station that teaches and preaches the word. That there is solid worship that you enter into the presence of God. Look us up. Dove Church, 4660 Military at the corner of a ratio. Right at the corners of Michigan Avenue and Livernois Avenue in the city of Detroit. God bless you. We will look forward to joining you again in another video presentation from this church. Praise the Lord again. To all of our listeners, we thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you, and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, 
at dovechurch.org slash giving, which takes you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.